Hello everyone. If you've been following along with this channel, you'll know that I've been working on a music video completely made with Blender Grease Pencil. The song is called What a Friend from the band Terrible Sons. They are a super talented husband and wife duo with a collection of amazingly poetic songs. If you haven't seen it, I've put the link in the description and in the information card. To show your support for this Blender animation, please go over to their channel and watch it through. Today we'll be going over each scene, highlighting some of the decisions and mistakes that I made along the way, as well as covering some of the technical problems that I had to solve. We'll just go from scene to scene, trying to keep it reasonably brief. I believe that the first scene in an animation is one of the most important, because it sets the pace, and this is when the viewer decides if they're going to keep watching. For these reasons, I chose to make a very simple establishing shot. Just panning across a cityscape with a tram running across the screen to add some interest and complement the music. To make this tram, I wanted to make it look almost 3D. To do this, I drew it as a 2D grease pencil object, then I duplicated it and tinted that object darker. I then moved it back in the scene. Now moving this duplicate left and right will make it look like the tram is rotating. In the second scene, I begin to set the stage, showing the outside of a cafe where the main character is sitting. Here, I want to talk about one of the pitfalls that I would fall into time and time again during the lifetime of this project, and that is losing details from the sketch. In this case, I had drawn those plants outside the building in the sketch, and this added visual interest, but when drawing over this with the line and color, I covered these details up and forgot about them. This meant that for a long time, I didn't have these plants and the scene was the lesser for it. I quickly realized that I just had to go through each scene and look for things that I had missed. I'll highlight some other scenes where this happened, but for now, let's move on. This next scene is one of the most involved scenes in the entire animation. It consists of two rigged characters, both of which were rigged solely for this scene. This scene took a lot of time and several iterations, and I was still not entirely happy with it, but that's just how animation is sometimes. It also involves a dynamic camera movement, flying between buildings, and much more. For this reason, let's just talk about some of the more interesting challenges and features of this scene. Firstly, his head turn. If you've seen some of the other videos on this channel, you may have seen my tutorial series on rigging a character's head turn in Blender. I've received some comments on these videos, asking if it would not be more time efficient to just animate their head turn frame by frame. And I admit that in different contexts, these methods have their place. In this case, I did choose to animate a 5 frame head turn frame by frame, and rigged this up with a time offset modifier. This was much more time efficient as it was only used in this one scene and had to look a long way over to one side, making rigging more difficult. At other points in the animation, I chose to rig the head turn, and I'll talk about the reasons behind that at the time. Secondly, I would like to talk about the steam rising from his coffee mug. It's a subtle effect, but animating it and combining it with the rest of the scene was very difficult. I achieved this effect by applying an animated steam texture to a 3D plane. Then I just subdivided it and attached it to an armature. This was then parented to a mug object so that when it moved, so did the steam. Finally, I used an animation technique called space switching to offset the animation at each point of the mesh. For more information on this, check out the videos on this topic from Pyrrhic from P2 Design. Link is in the info card. The final challenge was combining it with the rest of the scene. If you've ever tried to do this, you'll find that by default, 
Meshes that use transparency, as is the case for our steam, do not mix well with the grease pencil objects. To work around this, we have to combine them in the compositing window. We can do this by adding a new render layer in the top right corner of the screen and turning everything except for the steam off. Then in the first render layer, we can turn off the steam. Then in the compositor, we just add two render layer nodes, set them to the two different layers, then mix them using an alpha over node. If the 3D mesh goes behind another object, this will add complications, but for most situations this will work. In this scene, the viewer is introduced to the second character for the first time. There's not much to mention in the scene, but I would like to talk about it in conjunction with the next scene. Here we have a frame by frame animation of the second character reaching over to her phone to check who's calling her. During the scene, her sleeve is rolled up, while in the last scene, it's not. This is my mistake and a break in continuity. I would usually try to avoid this, but it's easy to miss, so be on the lookout for this in your own animations. Another thing I'd like to mention about these two scenes is how they transition. In my first iteration, the first of these two scenes ended with her slumping down and sighing. This made an abrupt transition. So in the final render, we have her begin to reach out to her phone, making it easier for the eye to follow. In this next scene, we see the first character on the phone, calling the second. I had a lot of trouble rigging this phone cable, and I probably should have just given him a cell phone. But once I did, I had a lot of fun animating it, focusing on overlapping action by offsetting keyframes in the dope sheet editor. During the editing of the scene, I cut this single scene into two, separating it by a cut back to the second character. This meant that we didn't get bored of seeing him, and secondly, it's a good example of a rigged head turn. As I mentioned before, sometimes it's better to animate a head turn frame by frame, and sometimes it's better to rig it. For both my main characters, I've rigged a limited head turn. This came in handy here because the head turn wasn't the main action, but just supporting the emotions that I'm trying to convey. It's a subtle effect, but it really helps give the scene depth. In my opinion, a good place to use rigging. A little later on, we see the male character falling through the air. This is meant to show how his life is out of control. Here we see him falling towards the earth. To make this, I modeled a 3D planet and covered it with trees and buildings. I then used this shader to give it a stylized feel. Essentially, it just takes the base shading, and when it's darker than a certain value, it becomes blue, otherwise it becomes yellow. As we transition to this next scene, where he's lying in bed, I wanted to capture the feeling of dreaming that you're falling and waking up with a jolt. This also fits the music, as at this point it's meant to be nighttime. There's not much special about this scene, however, I did find one workaround to a problem that I faced a lot during this project. The way that Grease Pencil renders at the moment often leaves these flickering artifacts behind. Particularly when there are two shapes really close together with really high contrast, where a single pixel can change back and forth based on the position of the camera. In this case, the pupils of his eyes created these artifacts as they crossed over to the whites. Hopefully one of the developers will solve this at some point, um, in the meantime, I found that creating a faux anti-aliasing by outlining the offending object with a semi-transparent line greatly reduced the visibility of these artifacts. Moving on to the side view of him in his bed, I really only want to mention that his bed is way too long. 
and is exaggerated by the lens effects in compositing. I will also mention how I transitioned out of this scene. While we're fading to the next scene, we can see him lift his phone up. This helps the viewer make sense of what's happening, so even though this implies that he sleeps with his phone in his hand, it's okay because it clarifies the following scene. Speaking of this scene, I had to make a custom rig for his hand and phone, and I'd like to talk about how the contact information on his phone was rigged. Essentially, I have a few layers that make up the screen. First, I have one layer for the screen, and another with all of these boxes. These extend past the edge of the screen. I then mask this to the first layer, and attach all of the shapes on the second layer to a bone. Then all I have to do is move this bone up and down to scroll the screen. Moving along, in this scene we see the second character taking a midnight bath. In the scene, I created this water effect on the wall by creating a procedural shader. First, I have two textures which are inbuilt into Blender, called Voronoi textures. This makes a bubbly grayscale texture. By multiplying two of these textures together and masking it to a couple gradient nodes, we create this cool water effect. Finally, to make the result blue, I pass this through a color ramp. Then I was able to overlay this with the rest of the scene in the same way as I did for the steam in the cafe. This scene was made to transition between the last scene and her lying down in the bath underwater. To do this, I put part of the water behind the character and another segment in front. Unfortunately, this creates a very harsh line between the two. To cover this up, I drew some small bubbles to hide the transition and I added a noise modifier to animate them. We finally come to one of my favorite scenes, the ripple scene. The base animation was relatively easy to make. I just drew a face and added a lattice to deform the back part of the hair, making a floating effect, as well as some frame by frame for that little strand there. My favorite part of this scene are the ripples. I'll just give a brief overview. Essentially, I created a physics simulation using the dynamic paint feature. I then rendered out the normal map for that and applied it to the video. Next, we see the character enveloped in a deep ocean. This is meant to mirror the other character falling through the air. For this scene, I followed an online tutorial on how to make a 3D ocean with light rays and everything link in the description. The only thing that I changed was I reduced the sample rate in the render so that when I put it through the denoiser it looks painterly and it renders much faster. In this scene the lyrics are party next door turned bad however I chose to set it in his own apartment with him arriving home from the party. This means that I avoided animating a large crowd of characters. Another thing I want to mention about this scene is the fact that I put a lot of effort into the animation, the compositing, and the background. And in the final video, it lasts like a full two seconds. Sometimes animation is just like that. Sometimes there's a 10 second segment made with very little effort, and other times one second of animation takes hours to finish. In the next few scenes, I made this fire effect similarly to the water effect in the bath scene, this time using noise textures instead of Veroni. I'll leave a link to a Blender file in the description. After this, we go to a top-down scene of an ashtray and cigarettes landing on a carpet. I use this to transition to the next scene by lining them up with the moon and stars. 
This is the first scene that I animated, and I've already covered most of it in another video, so for now I'll just cover what I've added or changed. I've changed the spirit character behind the main character to match the cafe scene earlier. And I added these weird wisps that follow the camera. I did this because it fits thematically and it gave the viewers something to look at as the camera swipes across the city. In this scene, the only remarkable thing I want to talk about are her hands. A new technique that I found during this project's creation is what I like to call patches. This is when we add a separate grease pencil object and attach it to the rig using empties as a temporary workaround. Initially, I tried to make the rigs perfect for every situation, but I soon realized that making the end result look good is the most important thing. Not trying to fit a rig to what I want. In the last scene, we see the second character looking at herself in the mirror. For this, I had her normal rig in the mirror and a simpler back-facing rig in the front. Initially, I was going to animate these separately, however, this would have looked weird and out of sync. So instead, I used drivers and constraints so that it would animate automatically with the other rig. Something that I realized when animating this scene is how we use 2D animation to fake 3D. Initially, I had the objects moving left and right in the same direction as the other rig, because that is what happens in a mirror. But then I realized that in this animation, when I animated it left and right, this was in fact faking moving backwards and forwards. This means that the rig has to follow in the opposite direction of the other rig. In this video, I missed a few of the more boring scenes, but this was still a really long video, and I hope that you enjoyed it. Again, if you haven't seen the finished music video, please check it out, and let the band know if you like their music. It would really mean a lot. Thank you all for watching, and hopefully I will see you around.